Are you interested in ideas of time or synchronicity? No, no. Do you feel that the attributes of a given object or system must necessarily dictate the terms of its interpretation? No. Would you agree with the statement that any one of content in any given system would mean yes? Do you believe that any given object that consists of constructed ways and essentially any one of the things for interpreting reality is a fundamental fallacious one? Yes. Have you clearly delineated to yourself in your mind the conceptual apparatus that separates from data content from what you could call the noise of the given system? No, no, no. Have you found yourself applying that order to ontological frameworks to systems of meaning that you might say that you know their own preconditions and values? No. Are you engaged in the current debate surrounding the problem of reality by a couple of the ontological principles of ethical truth? Wait, no. Do you subscribe to the principle that each individual syntactical unit of a given speech act must necessarily obviate its own essentially arbitrary nature in order to successfully denote meaning or value of the metaphysical nature? Yes. Have you found yourself tempted to articulate a new conception of subject object relations that attempts to de reify the categorical constructs that have hitherto constrained the discourse in this area? No. No. Has this conversation up until this point succeeded in demonstrably laying out a framework for enacting principles of discourse which allow for a certain subject of freedom of motion to form very conceivably close yet not necessarily mutually exclusive objects of attention or ideological positions? Yes. Would you disagree with the argument that a given conception of epistemic certainty is by definition adopted by the community subscribing to its corresponding language game as an essentially accurate representation of reality? Yes. 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 But do you not then leave yourself vulnerable to the criticism that your position purposely obscures the terms upon which it defines its axioms? No. Is the conception that not merely agree upon which one might thrust oneself into a position where any of the terms assumes the authority of a qualitative and objective speech act? No. Do you feel that you found a way of squaring the circle, so to speak, insofar as ever for now the essentially incompatible, arguably even incomprehensible nature of the fact of our own cognitiveness on the one hand and on the other hand? Yes. But are you going to the question of how to avoid an infinite regress? Not necessarily. Do you consider yourself someone who can successfully avoid equivocating between opposing lexicographical orders even when doing so both advances your argument and you easily slip off the radar of your inner interlocutor? No, no, no. I think the degree that you're here for constructed in a rather than mostly consistent and economical conceptual framework for understanding these problems, yet many of your critics still remain skeptical of your opinion.